Hello everybody, welcome back to today's session on Android Framework Components. From a few last uh, couple of videos, we are going through the concepts of AC Linux. What are the different concepts which occur in AC Linux? And we'll continue with the same topic today too. So uh, today we'll see the concept of AC Linux context and few important uh, commands in AC Linux which help us to change the uh, context. So let's get started. So basically what is SE Linux context? SE Linux context is nothing but it's a name used by SE Linux policy to decide whether or not a process can access a file, directory, port or any other resource for that matter. So the SE Linux policy should decide, okay, based on this SE Linux context, if it can access any file, directory, port or resource. That is the use of SE Linux context. It's like a name given to a file, like how we identify every person with a unique name, right? Similarly, for every file, there will be SE Linux context, which uniquely identifies that file. So uh, if two different files are using the same permission for the same user, okay, imagine I'm a user I'm, and I'm having two different files. I have permission to access both files and both files have same permission. But if their contexts are different, I may be uh, able to access one but not the other. Okay, the context with which I am looking for, if that does not matter, uh, match, then I cannot actually uh, access that particular file. So this one I'll explain with an example in detail in my uh, upcoming slides. But for now you remember SE Linux context is nothing but it's a name used by SE Linux policy to decide whether or not we can access a particular uh, process or resource or file or directory, anything for that matter. Um, let's now see the different types of context files. Okay, there are various types of context files and we'll go through them one by one. So the first one being file context. When do we use file context? Okay, we assign labels to files used by various system components. Okay, so um, file context, if any uh, change in the file context to apply new changes, we have to run the restore con uh, command. So uh, file context to put in simple words, all the files in your uh, system are named by using the file context. Remember that much. Next context is GenFS context. So assigns label to file system like proc or uh, vfat that does not support extended attributes. So GenFX context in uh, easy words, just remember it's used to label all the file systems. Okay, here a particular file. In file context, we use this to label a particular file. In GenFS, we use to label a particular file system. vfat is nothing but it's a virtual uh, file attribute table which is used during the system uh, booting okay so any changes to it needs a reboot or unmount and remount as it is loaded as the part of kernel for genfs so we saw file context we saw genfs context so next we will see property context this will assign label to android system properties to control which process can set them see every system property cannot be set by every other process uh, to give a vague example all the properties related to date and time okay only date and time system service or date and time system processes will have the permission to set them okay so in order to label all the system properties we will basically use uh, property context so init process will read this uh, property context configuration during startup okay and certain property should be allowed to change only by certain apps or processes for that matter we basically use property context Next, we'll see what is service context. Service context is again very, very important. Assigns label to Android binder services to control what process can uh, register or look up for a binder 
reference so uh, this service context we basically use for all the system services which we write okay and the service manager will read this configuration during the startup so this is basically used by a uh, core services and during the system startup service manager will read all this context core services means you all might be knowing activity manager package manager battery manager every service which the system server will start after boot up so they are the core services so to label them we use this service context next uh, we will see what is se app context so as the name itself says this se app context assign labels to app processes and data data directory so all the apps which are residing in data data directories okay so there will be different app levels right so for bt there will be different app level permissions for wifi there will be different app level permissions for radio related applications there will be different permissions so zygote and uh, install daemon will read this configuration on every application launch and the device startup uh next we will see mac permissions.xml so this mac permissions.xml is nothing but it assigns sc info tag to apps based on their signature and optionally their package name so um and sc info tags can be used as key to sc context files to assign a specific label to the apps with sc info tag so for the applications whenever uh, we want to give a specific label for every application then we mention that application in this xml file along with your sc information tags okay so system server will use this information during the startup again so these are the different types of context files these are uh, nothing but the unique names given to different types of files see we know android system will have uh, multiple types of files right files file system there will be a file which will uh, maintain the system properties there will be application related files and there will be service system service related files so for every type of file we give this context file to uniquely identify them so uh, let me summarize again file context we basically use for uh, naming of uh, labeling of the files genfs context labeling of the file systems property context for we use this to label android system properties and service context this is uh, basically used by the uh, system application by the core services in your android device se app context this is basically used by all the applications in data data directories mac permissions.xml is again used by applications which should have a se info tag so these are the various types of the uh, context files which are available in se linux so here in the next slide i wanted to uh, explain with an example the use of file context and uh, what is the main uh, role of se linux and how to change the file context in se linux okay so uh, imagine i am a user and i want to access a file which is having this particular context okay so here i have taken an example of dimple youtube se linux and i am looking to access a file i have the permissions of reading and writing that file but that file should have the context of whatever i have mentioned here this is my only condition i have your uh, two different files one file is a text file 1.txt which is under the directory youtube sample and it has the permissions read write and the context i have named it as dimple youtube se linux and i have another file text file 2.txt and this also is under the same directory youtube sample it also has the same permissions read and write permissions as the text file 1.txt but the only difference is the context of this one is not matching with the context of the file one both are having two different context so here the context is dimple youtube no se linux just for an example i have given one 
context so here i am a user i am looking to access and i am trying to read the file which is having this particular context it's like a code code exchange so this is for security reasons so if i don't have sc linux if i don't have all this context checks what will happen any user can come they can write this file they can write to this file because he has read and write permissions right but sc linux which is security enhanced linux it's improving our security of the android device it's preventing un unauthorized uh, person to access any file just like that okay for those things we define this context you so based on this context we are deciding yes i have permission only to access this particular file i do not have permission to access this particular file you all can think this is an application a user return application and that application um, cannot go and alter all the system files on your device that application should alter the file only which the context it's defined for with right it cannot alter all the files only the fi uh, context of the file which is matching only that file it can alter so this file will not be accessible to this particular user because they both have two different context now uh this is the use of sc linux i hope you all understood if i did not have all this context uh, things sc linux or no other policies if i didn't have all these things then what would happen any person could access any file right security would be gone no one would have even bothered to use android devices so everything would have been gone all the important private data everything would have been gone so because of sc linux because of all this context we are having the accessibility to access only the particular file now but uh, this is an important application i still want to access this text file 2.txt what has to be done i can change the context of this okay so for this person to access this file the context of this file has to be changed right we cannot change the context of this uh person so we have to change the context of this particular file here i am changing the context to dimple youtube sc linux so from no sc linux i am changing it to sc linux after changing the context this person can access this file also so he can access both the files now he or she can access both the files now so which command do we use to change this context how did i change the context of the file so for that we use few commands and we'll see in the next slide we use sc manage and restore con commands to change the context of a file and the format goes like this sc manage space f context space minus a minus t is the type of the file and we give whatever new context we need to give and the file name along with the path for example related to my previous example sc manage f context minus a minus t what context i need to give i need to give dimple youtube sc linux so i this is my context and what is the location of that the entire directory path i'm giving youtube sample text file 2.txt so once i give this command and after giving this command i have to uh, execute restore con command because once i give this command the changes will not be taken place immediately once i give this my context will not be changed to a new context so i have to use restore con command okay which will uh, restore all the configurations and i have to give the file name for which file i'm trying to restore so once i give this command now my context will be changed to whatever i am thinking of writing it newly this is how we use sc manage and restore con commands we also have ch con command uh, it is almost similar to sc manage command 
okay so uh, chcon command is also used to change the context of the file and the format is chcon minus t whichever context we need to change followed by the file path but the only difference between chcon and se manage is that uh, this chcon is for temporary changes but this se manage we use for permanent changes after using sc manage we have to use restore con for the changes to take place for the file context to be applied whereas in ch con okay even if we don't run restore con temporarily the file context will be changed but if we run restore con it will be again changed to default is just the opposite of how we use in sc manage in sc manage only if we use restore con the changes will take place in ch con uh, once the changes will take place um, if we run the restore con the uh, changes will revert i mean whatever before was there whatever default state was there it will go back to that state so that's why changes made with ch con is temporary in nature whereas uh, in sc manage it's permanent in nature and uh, the context of the file altered with chcon goes back to default with execution of restore con so all these uh, three commands sc manage restore con and uh, chcon all these three commands are basically used for changing the file context in sc linux so with that we'll come to end of today's uh, session and today's question will be what is context used to change the system property so we basically use property underscore context to change the system property so i hope today's session was informative and uh, helpful uh, you all understood or you all got an idea what is the use of uh, file context when and how this file context is used and what is the importance of sc linux and what are the different commands used to change the file context i'll see you all soon in my next session until then everyone take care bye